Today on the Topic Show, Kamal Harris crashes on Fox News' interview. EU wants to find all of Elon Musk's businesses. School bribes kids in order to vote for Kamal Harris. Walgreens' fiscal 2024 results are in. True Valley Hardware Stores files for bankruptcy. And yet another chicken meat recall. All of that and much more on the Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of The Topping Show is proudly sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added reseller and services company with a special preference to IT security. Heck, I see your founder at least twice a day. You guys, he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's the joke. If you're an IT either or a business owner, you can reach out to the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, give away a free flamethrower with every IT purchase Q4. Go to toppingtechnologies.com to learn more. Also, and lastly, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So, if you can click that button and tell your friends, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the business part of the podcast, you have Walgreens fiscal 2024 results are in, and uh, they're uh, not great. The stock went up for about 18 seconds, then, uh, yeah, long term, still quite concerning. Now, granted, I have to say this fun little caveat, this is not financial advice. Granted, if I was a financial guru or had, you know, you know they say hindsight's 2020 when it comes to vision, you know, an NVIDIA stock years ago, and they've shot up to the moon. Now, let's look at the Walgreens stock, you know, long term, which, yeah, it's quite horrifying. They used to be, oh, geez, as recent, let's, again, this is a five-year trend, currently trading for $10.44 per share. In past five years, I mean, most S&P 500, on average, it goes at, you know, 10% every year. Past five years for Walgreens, um, it's down 81.12%, which uh, is pretty rough. Past one year, it's down 51.55%, so half off, which... I mean, I was not overly optimistic, but I thought things might get a little bit better after they ousted the old inept CEO for a new one, which eh, it seemed to have a little small pop in the stock, and, eh, but overall, not great. When it comes to year to date, the stock is down 58%. Past month, it's actually up 22%, but yeah, last week it was about up 20%. So some good news, but I mean, overall, still pretty rough, and 52 week high, 27%. Dollars five cents per share. Fifty-two week low eight dollars and twenty-two cents per share. A lot of people are starting wondering, well, really, do, do we really need them? But let's dive into the details in terms of their fiscal results for twenty twenty-four. Because again, a lot of companies have you know you got calendar year, and some of them have to offset their fiscal year, so it actually does not line up with the calendar. Now they say, "quote," and again, this I'm, this isn't great news, but I guess kind of some shareholders like it. They say, "quote," fourth quarter losses per share was eight dollars. I'm sorry, three dollars and forty-eight cents per share. Loss per share of 21 cents per share a year ago quarter. Loss per share is a current quarter. In the current quarter, includes non-cash charge for valuation allowances on deferred tax assets, uh, assets, primarily related to opioid liabilities recognized in prior periods, and non-cash impairment charges for CareCentrics, Goodwill, and equity investment in China. Adjusted earnings per share came in at 39 cents per share, down 40.8% on a constant currency basis driven by net reimbursement pressure, Lapping the reversal of incentive accruals and year uh, prior year sales lease gains, partially offset by cost savings of growth U.S. healthcare. Fourth quarter sales, though, ending, they did increase. There's a little bit of silver line there by six percent. So year over year, it's at thirty-seven point five billion dollars, of six point one percent on a constant currency basis. Now, uh, fiscal twenty twenty-four loss per share. They said ten dollars one cents, increase of one hundred eighty point four percent compared to a year ago, which is always. I, again, their sales are, you know, they did go up, but they also announced they're going to you know, close 1,200, 12, yeah, 1,200 stores. And I don't see the value prompt of Walgreens these days. Not, not anything against some place of work there, but more and more people I know who actually need their pharmaceutical needs or convenience fees, they just go to Walmart, which has darn near everything you need these days. And shoot, their stock is going up like a rocket the past couple of years. But when it comes to, you know, we also have CVS across seemingly every street that a Walgreens is located, and they're all, as long as I could tell, I mean, CVS is always open. Walgreens, I don't think they open until 7 or 8, at least when I drive past them, you know, around the DFW area. But, yeah, the stock popped up a little bit in the short term, but the sales a little bit good. But, I mean, what's going to really turn around the overall trend of Walgreens? And, I mean, do you even, I mean, when's the last time you actually went to Walgreens? Do you know anyone who's shopped at Walgreens at all in the past couple of years? Let me know, because, as always, be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Other interesting business news, you have True Value files for bankruptcy after it stood tall for 75 years, which is 
very unfortunate. And there's some, some silver lining. The store's going to be open during the bankruptcy. But yeah, what used to be, you know, the staple of the community. I mean, shoot, it seems like everyone, everyone I knew grew up around at least one of those. But kind of being displaced by the major retailers. I mean, obviously you have Walmart, which also has tools and the home, home supplies in that regard. And of course, you have the, you know, the big old Home Depot. And then you got the little Lowe's. Now, this comes to us thanks to USA Today, specifically Eric Legata, who's right over there, saying, quote, True value files for bankruptcy after 75 years, selling hardware rival doing its best. They say, quote, all true values, 4,500 stores will remain open during the bankruptcy process because they're independently owned, which, again, that was always the kind of the allure of shopping, you know, you're shopping local because, again, the person who actually operated the store, they owned it. They were invested in it, you know, helped the community out. And, I mean, to me, that was a lot of reason. A lot of people I knew shop there because they knew the guy running the store. He was a local member of the community and and the traditional franchise model with a little bit more decision making and big value, true value, which that was a little awkwardly worded, but one of the biggest things was the big purchasing power. So as a big entity, true value can negotiate with these large tool manufacturers and then get you a bigger discount for a store. Whereas if you and I just wanted to, you know, talk to someone like you know TTI, which owns Milwaukee and half the tools out there, well, they're not gonna give us much discount because of the small quantity. I mean so they basically laugh us off the face. That they laugh us. Uh, they laugh at us for quite some time. But I mean, the big value true values. They go and they negotiate those. Then the individual, individual store you get to purchase what they want, and they get a pretty aggressive discount. As the parent companies buy in bulk, you see this a lot of sports ball teams too, where the the league will actually negotiate, and then the individual teams will get to choose if they want to choose those particular items. Now they say that quote. A whole uh, sorry hardware wholesaler filed for Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. Made plans to sell his business to Home Depot. To its home improvement rival, do it best. Which, yeah, I didn't even know that still existed. I, there's marketing. That's not great marketing. When was the last time you heard of do it best? Now they say, quote, true. Oh, why are they here? They say true value based in Chicago. I don't say there's a problem, but how much are they wasting in taxes there, and pay having, having to pay employees more because the cost of living, as well as employees getting taxed there. I want to say that I don't want to say it's a simple solution just to relocate to a great place or some might argue the great country of Texas, but that hurt. That would be a certain, that would be a good way to sharpen those balance sheets. Now, they say, quote, they say, True Valley based Chicago said in press release that all of its 4,500 stores will remain open during the process because they're independently owned. A 75 year old company initiated the process in order to enter an agreement with Do It Best with the offer to buy them. Oh, wow. That's, for some reason, I thought they were bigger than that. They offered to pay them $153 million in cash to purchase the business. True Valley, which sells a variety of home improvement goods like tools, lumber, and plumbing said in bankruptcy court filings that had succumbed to slumping sales and affected other companies in the sector. The company has been between, wow, $500 million and $1 billion in total liabilities, according to Reuters. CEO Chris Kempa says, quote, We determined that the sale of our business was the path forward to maximize value and best serve our retail par partners and other stakeholders into the future. We believe that entering the process with an agreed offer from Do It Best, who has similar decades-long history in the home improvement space and also operates with a focus on supporting members and helping members grow, is the most beneficial next step for True Value. You, know, you can see one of those iconic True Value hardware stores, which looks like Do It Best is the biggest bidder. They say, quote, under the agreement, Do It Best, the home improvement rival will become a stalking horse, quote, bidder, according to True Value, which means that while the Fort Wayne, Indiana company is technically a lead bidder, True Value remains open to better offers, which, I mean, I'm not sure, eh. I, they're too small. I mean, I'd be shocked if there's any other offers because Home Depot, I mean, the power of the Home Depot day one was the large complexes. The whole, I mean, the whole fit and finish of the stores was more aimed towards contractors and the larger purchases. I mean, I don't think they would ever do, this is much more boutique stores. These are almost like a game shop in size. Well, maybe not that small, nothing is. But these are much more smaller scale. So I don't, I mean, let me know the comments. I, I can't conceivably think of anyone doing a counter bid for true value at this time. Now they say, quote, in addition to agreeing to pay $153 million in cash, Do It Best would also take on about $45 million in contracts and other obligations and hire some True Value employees. Now they say, quote, Do It Best is a member-owned wholesale of lumber and hardware products to independent stores. That the sale would create a worldwide net, net, network exceeding 8,000 stores in the U.S. 150 countries around the globe. Do It Best um, CEO Dan Car uh, Starr said, quote, We understand the unique challenges of the retail industry, and if we are successful in our bid, for these assets, we are committed to driving true value stores, growth alongside our Do It Best member stores. The acquisition would represent not just a growth of Do It Best, but a brighter future for all independent home retail improvement, which 
I mean, yeah, Lord knows they need any help they can get because, again, retail ain't easy. I mean, obviously, e-commerce is, you know, exploding, but in terms of competing hardware stores, where, I mean, how many are left now? I mean, you had, I, I even know, I mean, okay, I, I may have heard of Do It Best once, but you got Do It Best, True Value, Home Depot, Lowe's, and just because they have darn near everything, Walmart. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think. I Unfortunately, I don't really think there's much left at this point. Of course, hopefully there's a lot of independent mom and pop shops in terms of, kind of multiple multiple location stores. I don't see too many, which is why I'm kind of guessing there's not going to be anyone as a counter bid or going to overbid. But let me know in comments. Do you have any reminiscent uh, good memories of True Value? Do, I mean, do you shop at your local store? I mean, interestingly enough, in my, you know, anecdotally in my area, I really don't see any when I'm driving around. And I see a lot of the Home Depots. They're hard to miss those. They're the size of a football stadium, so it seems. And then, of course, we see Lowe's, you know, usually everywhere as well. But let me know in the comments, because as always, we are fascinating to hear what you have to say. Now, going over to the Culture Prime Podcast, you have a school bribing kids in order to vote for Kamala. Which, yeah, that's uh, went pretty viral. And some are saying it's unethical, uh, you know, it, it's terrible. Granted, it's, you know, student election. But um, I kind of think it's a good metaphor, considering how Kamala keeps trying to, you know, and Biden previously... Try to keep bribing people for votes, including forgiving student loans, which the Supreme Court says unconstitutional because, again, your loan, you took it out, you should pay for it. Granted, I also, you know, colleges are also pushing degrees that aren't worth a damn, like underwater lesbian basket waving. But I partially digress. Now, this comes with things to lives at TikTok. She says, quote, and of course, you know, no, no, uh, not too surprising it's happened in uh, California. Eh? She says, quote, a California teacher allegedly had students do a mock vote for Trump or Harris. Those who voted for Harris were rewarded with a pizza. Yeah, pizza party, while those who voted for Trump got nothing. Which, uh, is anyone surprised? I mean, it's just like the real world, only on a smaller scale. Now, yeah, we'll see about a minute or two long, play a little summary of it here. Do you guys think this is normal for them to bring politics into school? Well, and these days, public schools, yes, yeah, indoctrination in politics is all they do. Remember, folks, it's a 32 year low ACT scores, and yet the teachers union say we deserve more money. Yeah, about that. Probably not. No, absolutely not. If they vote for, I live in California, by the way, but if you vote for Kamala Harris, then you're going to get a pizza party. But if you vote for Donald J. Trump, apparently you are excluded. They said that my teacher was screaming at her saying the other class is voting Trump. So they don't get to use the paper patches, not the school supplies for the girls. They don't get to use the computers, the chargers, or the, what to call it? The... The scrunchies, the deodorant. But remember, they're not coming after your kids. Mm hmm Or stuff like that. Okay, so you guys don't get to use this stuff. It's mm -hmm. okay. And then, what was that um, about the pizza party? That we don't get the pizza party because only the, the kids that, only our class that voted um, Kamal get to um, eat the pizza party. But some of the kids didn't vote for Kamal, they voted for Trump. So then what's going to happen to them? They're not going to be included. Only the kids that voted for it come up. Hello. So I had a couple questions for you. Now she's telling that teacher. So I heard that Giselle was telling me that you had mentioned that the kids that are not going to attend the pizza party are the kids who voted other than Camilla. Wait, say it again? That you had told the, the class that whoever votes for Camilla will get a pizza party, but those that don't will not be included in the pizza party. For Harris? Um, yeah. Uh, what period is your daughter in? I am not sure. Uh, so, I believe only one period, period five, uh, had a majority for Harris. Mm -hmm. And I and I said, and to follow that same spirit, because uh, the Democrats are more for feeding the hungry free medical care, uh, free more services, just pay higher taxes, that I'll be, be willing to buy pizza for the class. Okay. What did, what did so she say? Said? You are willing to buy pizza for the class for those who wow. um, win with Harris, right? For those that voted for Harris? Yeah. It's, is she in period five? If she's not in period five, she does, they don't. We're just doing a regular day. Oh, okay. So it's in period five. It's the entire class. Just so what period are you with this teacher? Five. Five. So she is in period five. 
Oh yeah. So, so I'm gonna try for tomorrow for for pizza, if not Friday. <laughs> I so the tomorrow. other classes is because they did not vote for um Harris, they're not gonna get pizza. Yeah. Well, they can. They just do what the conservatives do, which pay for yourself. Oh, that's fine. Um, can I take some pizza for those other classes? Um, for those other classes? Uh, what do you mean? The ones that voted for Trump. Uh, you can? I, I just, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest can, with you. you can, I am a little bit upset. Can, uh, I am a, I'm, I'm extremely upset because if this was the other way around and I were to go to people's houses and I'm like, hey, do you want a bag of food? Who did you vote for? You know, like, this is not Cuba. Like, oh. like that's not okay to do. You know, like, I don't all think Cuba, kids, they have the right to vote, though. Exactly. So if there is a right to vote in this country, we should be able to vote for whoever we want with no, no prices in return. Yeah, I agree. He says he agrees, but his actions are the opposite of it. Now, this comes to reason number 9,458,763... No, wait. 9,875,745,321 to homeschool your kids and or leave... Get out of California. Yeah, they're brainwashing your kids hours a day. And this is not... Only, remember, listen to what they were saying earlier. Not only do the kids get rewarded with pizza if they vote for, for Kamala Harris... But the other kids are actively punished, not only by not getting pizza, which, let's be honest, most pizza is crap these days, but nevertheless, they actually don't, they lose their computer privileges as well, and they lose all their privileges. Yeah, it's just brainwashing, bribing them to vote for Kamala, which, again, is a perfect metaphor. We see that in the real world with adults. I mean, it's morally vacuous, unconstitutional, and yet we see it time and time again. Thankfully, this one pretty viral. got 3.4 million views and 66,000 likes. The first comments coming from Paul Zupa saying, quote, that California teacher needs to be immediately fired. Teachers cannot push politics on children. It's a fireable offense, getting 8.7 thousand likes. So let's be honest, it's California. They'll probably give the teacher a raise in tenure. You also have Libercat Media TM says, so she's telling them to vote for vote her way for pizza. The teacher clearly has Trump derangement syndrome, getting 1.1 thousand likes. Arthur Eagleman says, quote, our education system needs a complete overhaul, getting 2.1 thousand likes. Masculine Bay says, time to homeschool your kids. And some nice, what do you call it, dressed up grandmas and says teachers when I was a kid. And the grandma said, I hope everyone had a good time at recess. And teachers now, they look like, Jesus, yeah. Discussing NPCs, it says, white whiteness is a privilege. Now are you ready to hear about my sexuality? Gain 3.4 thousand likes, which, yeah, there's uh, the number of recent homeschools quickly becoming almost uncalculable. There's so many. And yeah, literally, <laughs> their teachers are, yeah, indoctrinating kids to see it. Is it isn't I mean I'm surprised it's become a political thing, but yeah, teachers coming out of the closet to their kids, talking to them about what they do in the bedroom. It's disgusting. Mr. Jones says teachers are manipulating kids behind closed doors, should be fired and school investigated. Gave 4.9. Ah, oh, I thought we can get it to 5,000 likes. 4.9 thousand likes though. Sam Mitha says it sounds like brainwashing illegal is tax funded public school in 2.3 thousand likes, which granted I would argue that's all purpose of public school for the most part these days. Nona says, right out of 1984, right thinking will be rewarded, wrong thinking will be punished. George Orwell, 1984, gained 1.4 thousand likes and an A plus for reference to the most important, well, one of the most important books of all time, George Orwell, 1984. It's one of my favorite novels. It's a dark novel, don't get me wrong, it's quite sad. Perhaps if you have children at home or, you know, younger readers, and a great exceptional book is also Animal Farm, George Orwell. You see a lot of the same parallels and morals and stories, but that one's a little bit easier to digest, a little bit more simpler verbiage, a little... And it's about, well, let's say, half the pages. You also have Alex saying, quote, So what the teachers is saying is that if you vote Democrat, you get free stuff. And if it isn't political indoctrination for the state, I know what it is. In 477 likes. Carla says, imagine how sick an evil person must be to do this. They need to be terminated from the employment immediately, gain 399 likes. Which, eh, it looks cool. It looks better if you do 400. Let's make 400 likes. Basil Appleyard says, this is wild. Classical conditioning the kids against a presidential candidate. What is going on? Getting 945 likes, which, I mean, there's a reason they target the kids with a myriad of things. Uh, I would argue their ideals are so indefensible. The only way you can really convince people of them is if they are a child and they don't know better. And conditioning them. Let's see here. A lot of people having memes saying the teacher will probably get a paid week vacation, which, 
Yeah, that's usually what happens in the public sector. There's not much accountability. Which again, a week pay, like a week paid leave is like a, it's literally a vacation. Like every time people hear that, and you see this with some police departments as well, and other public entities, people should be irate because you're paying for that. You're paying for that person just to sit at home and presumably do nothing. So I'm not seeing too many. Eh? No, again, I try. I'm not seeing any really any contrarian comments here. Let's see here. And again, it's also California. I don't think. I mean, I don't think anyone's surprised. I, I, I don't know why anyone is living in California. It's so expensive, so burdensome, so totalitarian. You can't even have a proper rifle in that state. Ironically, the AR-15 was invented in California by Eugene Stoner all those years ago at Armalite, and yet you can't even own one there, which is, unless it's bastardized. It's just ridiculous. And don't even get me started on the taxes and on that darn near everything. As far as they don't tax the air you breathe over there. But... Yep, I'm hoping more and more people start to realize what's going on in California. Maybe they vote some sanity in, make some changes. Because again, in terms of the, you know the actual land, the you know the, the scenery, the topography, the nature, it's a beautiful state. I mean, they have some of the best parks out there. It's amazing, and it would be great to live there if it wasn't for the bureaucracy and the government. And the people voted for that. Let's be honest. But let me know in the comments. Do you think this will go more viral? Will the teacher actually face any any ramifications? Will be listen to this? Will they be disciplined? Or is the whole school just happy this person is doing this? Let me know in the comments, because as always, be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Going into the political part of the podcast, you have Kamala Harris crashing on Fox News and is uh, quite, as the youth might say, epic. Or an epic fail is what I believe is what it's called. Now this comes to us thanks to, well, partially nostalgia, Kim.com, which if you ever remember back in the day, mega upload for all your downloading needs of you know storage in the cloud. Well, he's still around on them internet. He has his virtual, you know, X profile, I almost called it Twitter there, and it's literally at Kim, K I M dot com, D O T C O M. And he says, quote, Fox, 79% of Americans say you effed up. Kamala, Trump has been running for office. LOL. Which, yeah, this is, uh, it's less than a bit long, but it's hilarious. Let's look close to see if she has that cla those classic earrings on. Of Brett. More than 70% of people tell the country is on the wrong track. They say the country is on the wrong track. If it's on the wrong track. Now, in terms of the, set, in terms of the sample size for this, it says Marquette Law School, October, and again, so the survey was taken between October 1st and October 10th of 652 likely voters, plus or minus margin of error of 4.7%. So again, not the best sample size, but still is a poll. I got, again, <laughs> a direction of the country poll, 79% said we're on the wrong track. 21% are government employees. Ha, I'm only partially kidding. 21% they say that we're on the right track. And I mean, I work with darn near every industry um, for my day job. And yeah, nearly every industry is struggling right now. I like, yeah, trying to find a business that's growing, it's a rare thing these days. Unless your company's headquartered, you know, in Ukraine, you're making, you know, turning billion from the US government. But I partially digress. That track follows three and a half years of you being vice president and President Biden being president. That is what they're saying, 79% of them. Why are they saying that? If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. Now she does have those ridiculous looking earrings that some people are saying are, you know, micro, uh, little earpieces so she can hear from her um, handlers. Again, I have, I, I mean, I have a sister. And I, I've consulted with my few about the females and they have pretty sure they have like entire barrels of earrings that they like to i believe they call it accessorizing i mean if you're a guy you, let's be honest you wear the same thing every day you're, you're happy i mean got my same watch yeah see yeah works just fine but i mean they change it with all their different outfits and yet she still has the same pair of earrings in every one of her interviews even the debate as well can't help but think it's probably not a coincidence but i partially digress we'll go let me rewind we rewind it by a second there office but you've been the person <laughs> holding you've been in office for three and a half years and donald trump has been running for office <laughs> but you've been the person <laughs> holding the office come on Madam you Vice and i President. both know what i'm talking about you and i both know what i'm talking about i actually don't about. what are you talking about what i'm talking about is that over the last decade but people you're the have become power. but listen over the last decade, it is clear to me, and certainly the Republicans who are on stage with me, exhausted of Brett. More than people 70 are of people. So the past three and a half years have been terrible. We're in the wrong direction. Wait to save yourself. But but Trump is running for office. <laughs> I mean, that might have been the worst Kamala Harris impression. 
Granted, she changes her accent so many times, it's really hard to do it accurately, even with a cackle, I would argue. But yeah, so the world's going to hell. What's your excuse for your actions and choices you've made? Well, Trump's running for office. There's a reason her handlers kept her behind off these, outside of the public eye for months. The reason we didn't say any policies on her website until a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, that's uh, it's, uh, not so great there. It got 950,000 views as well as 29,000 likes. Now, one of the first comments coming from J, or PJ Paul saying, quote, question, how was Kamala Fox's interview? Answer, imagine a 100-car pileup getting hit by a train with an airplane crashing into it while an oil tanker explodes about causing a 9.0 earthquake triggering into tsunami washing away a county of rescued puppies. It was 10 times worse than that. They got 296 likes. As tears, it's hysterical. It's a screenshot from the Babylon Bee. It says, Democrats wondering if it's too late to go back to Joe Biden. In 223 likes, which, yeah, it's funny. They, they um, I mean, they bullied and pushed Joe Biden out of the, uh, you know, running for president again. And uh, I wonder if they're starting to, you know, kind of second guess that. Because that'd be good. Maybe I'll do that as a community poll question on the YouTube somewhere. But yeah, who do you think is more electable now that she's actually starting to talk a little bit? And that, I was going to say, I think it's the first time she hasn't had a teleprompter in front of her face. And the, maybe the questions are, you know, pre, who knows if these questions were also pre-given to her. But yeah. Let's see, y'all have to say, we, what the heck, we the memes? Kind of a failed profile name because they responded in text only saying, quote, Democrat default news, blame Donald Trump, getting 362 likes. Let's see. That was that clip, so, from Eddie. You know what, you gotta take during responsible his, for what happened presidency. in your administration. Yeah, no. You know what, you gotta take responsible his, for what happened presence. in your... <laughs> so Kamal also says, you're responsible for what happens in your administration. Yeah. And they're talking about how the border cross, illegal border crossings at, was it, the worst in 40 years? Yeah. Oh, my name of gettingtrumpnow.com, which I'd be surprised if I actually got that. Well, I guess it's an oddly specific domain. They quote, no matter what y'all think of Trump, he is the only alternative and to preventing world war is item number one. The work of bringing people together can begin getting 74 likes. I guess uh, Mike Lee Torres says, I think she truly believes what she said. She feels that they would have had done so much better over the last four years, if they didn't have to spend so much time prosecuting Trump and defending, oh yeah, I guess him pointing out their failures, getting 60 likes, which, yeah, that'd be fascinating statistics. How much money has the U.S. government spent with the lawfare going after Trump? It's a pretty penny. It's a lot, I mean, I would argue most of our tax dollars these days seem to be wasted, but it's a lot of wasted tax dollars. Andrade says her answer to every question is, but Donald Trump getting 59 likes. Let's see. You have a crypto medium has a little juxtaposition of two pictures. One picture is Donald Trump says, if Trump is going to hurt America, he will have done it the first term. Then a picture of Kamala Harris says, if Kamala Harris is going to help America, she will have done it during her first term. Gain 35 likes. One land says, she can't answer anything. Gain three likes. Ooh. Richard Reeves has an AI generated image of Kamala Harris looking more scary than usual. Says Kamala Harris is true form. Gain two likes. Which, here. Yeah. There's music added to it. Madam you Vice and President. I both know what I'm talking about. You yeah, it's terrible music. All the comments are pretty much saying, but Trump. Now, a lot of people are saying, you know, the election's over. I mean, Trump's going to win now. Well, I really don't know. I mean, granted, obviously, that'd be, you know, fantastic for the economy, the Bill of Rights, you know, you know, a lot. there's a lot of reasons that'd be exceptionally great. World, you know, world peace, you know, keeping our tax dollars here. But I can't help but think there's a lot of people, and I follow, you know, the left and right and every, everyone I can on social media, there's a lot of people who just have the same mantra, vote blue no matter who. There's some people where I don't, it doesn't even matter what she says. I mean, shoot, Biden barely had a pulse and he was running and they still voted for him. But I almost wonder, let me know in the comments, I almost wonder if there's anything that she could say that would get the left to not vote for her. I mean, there's just such a strong Trump derangement syndrome. I'm really skeptical of any, I mean, how much these interviews really are in, really influencing people who are on the fence. I mean, hopefully it's a great deal, don't get me wrong. But I wonder, it seems like so many votes are locked in. I mean, do you think, will this epic interview, epic fail, will it change the numbers even more than 1% or 3% as we see polls coming out in the next couple of weeks? Let me know in the comments, because as always, we fascinated here what you have to say. Other interesting political news, the European Union wants to find all of Elon Musk's businesses in true dictatorial totalitarian form, which... Yeah, I want to say I call it, but yeah, the EU is, uh, EU, well, I don't want to say evil, but well, yeah, well, actually, yeah, total control, over-regulation, take away individual freedoms, 
it's uh, I don't want to say I called it in fifth grade, but I remember back when they were consolidating and getting rid of a country's individual identities by consolidating to a single disgusting currency. I mean, I think that's a, to me, that's a big metaphor. Individual countries have their own beautiful currency. It's usually a form of artwork. I mean, look at coins throughout history. Maybe perhaps a, you know, maybe a tale or a sign of cultural, political, economic decay as the money becomes more and more rudimentary and simplistic. But yeah, the EU, in addition to wanting to ban gasoline cars, well, now they want to go after everything Elon owns in true fascistic fashion, which I, I'm not surprised. Because again, they hate, there's nothing more they hate than free speech. Now, this comes to us thanks to Space Sudor. Now, he actually is responding. He has a little clip out. Now, he says, quote, oh, geez, that's ridiculous. So here's the actual article. The European Union has warned X, X also on Twitter, that it may calculate fines against a social media company by including revenue from Elon Musk, other businesses, including Space Exploration Technologies Corp and Neuralink, an approach that would significantly increase the potential penalties for violating, violating content moderation policy, a.k.a. not censoring what they want to be censored. Space Sudor responded, say, quote, the EU has now said they want to find up to 8%, sorry, 6% global revenue for SpaceX and Neuralink. Is this a joke? Because Elon Musk owns X. Doesn't mean that you will find him based on all those companies. This has to be illegal in all caps, which, I mean, dictators and evil despots, they don't really care if it's legal or not, they're going to do it. Now, the real question is, where will that money come from? Will the U.S. government force Elon to turn it over? And how does that work? Also, considering Elon doesn't, I mean, Elon has some shareholders in the companies that are privately held, but it's not like he owns 100% of those companies. I mean, he's raised funds for both of those, and pretty, especially SpaceX. I know he's raised some um, with private, well, private equity and some, some close folks. And yeah, but they want to go after everything, which makes no logical sense in terms of morality or you know, common sense. But if you're evil, you want to strike at Elon and just ignore the laws and well, any business laws at all. I mean, these are each individual owned separate legal entities. And Europe, go, oh, I'm sure European fashion, we want to take everything while working two hours a day. Europeans. I feel bad for the people who still live there as they're also invaded. Now, this didn't go as far as I thought. It got 136,000 views and 3.7 thousand likes. This should scare the living Jesus out of any global business owner or anyone who works on a global scale. And for, lot, for the most part, we are a global economy. More and more businesses not just do business interstate in the U.S., but also doing it across the globe. And a lot of people, a lot of venture capital, a lot of those big businesses, they own multiple companies across the globe. Now, a wise man once said they're not coming after me, they're going after you, I'm just in the way. A wise man was also orange. But in all seriousness, that's, I think that's one of the most prolific, inspiring things Trump has ever said, because it's, it's been proven true time and time again, with the government going after people. Now, in this case, very similar to Delaware trying to screw Elon out of his hard-earned money by breaking a contract that Elon, the shareholders, and the board of directors had to come to agree to, I think you're going to see business react, maybe even start to leave the European Union. Especially if you have these large venture capitalists and a lot of companies that own multiple companies. This is terrible. So it's almost unfathomable how evil and scary this is. I mean, it's going to disrupt a lot of companies. And it'll be interesting to see how those dictators try to enforce this. Or will, will Elon have to shut down X throughout those countries? I don't know. It'll be interesting. But yeah, this is going to be one of the I mean, it's huge business implications. Especially for these large companies. Because again, they're just starting with Elon because they, you know, they're pushing back. But what if they don't like the politics of 3M, the engineering company out of Minnesota? What if they don't like the, comp the policies of, you know, Texas Instruments? That, if you, I was going to say, it's not a realm of possibilities. They still have a huge ripple effect. It's going to be, dude, you have another reason why they don't like the European Union, in addition to them trying to destroy automobiles, forcing EVs down everyone's throat and controlling everything. Yeah, no reason. I think those reasons are now the billions. Well, at least several hundred millions. But let me know. Do you think there'll be a ripple effect? Well, will Elon try to set up... These companies are already sheltered in terms of they're each individual privately owned companies and they're owned by multiple people. So I'm not sure. I mean, you hear stories about like basketball players where they put their money into like their mom's name so that way when, the, when their partner seems to inevitably sue them and try to steal half their stuff, well, they don't have anything. Their parent has it. I don't, I don't know if Elon might try to do this by putting the companies in a different name legal. I, I'm not sure what kind of move Elon is make, going to make on the political chessboard. But yeah, you can be sure that, I mean, it's because they're pissed because he won't censor their stuff. They won't censor the ideals that they, was, they want censored. One of the top comments comes from Vitro saying, how is this even legal? Getting 301 likes. 
Space Soldier says, no idea, getting 80 likes. Again, I don't think it's legal. Evil people, evil people also don't care if it's legal or not. Alan Dahl says, should it even be legal to find based on the global revenue from X instead of the European EU specific revenue, getting 442 likes? Not a good point. Mr. Buggles Biggles? Pretty unique name. He says, quote, socialists like money, other people's money more than anything else. True gain, 148 likes. Metathought says, EU, we can't compete with SpaceX, so, so, so somehow we'll generate passive income from SpaceX. Gain 225 likes, you know, yeah. It's almost pitiful, yeah, pitiful in comparison when you look at the global research, development, innovation, and what comes from, like, Europe. Let me think there. Michelin tires. Those are pretty impressive. They put them on the, on the Bugatti and airplanes and all that kind of stuff. We got that. Eppen Herstel, they make some good stuff in Belgium. I appreciate them. What else is Europe known for? Working three hours a day, low productivity, high regulation, high cost. Look at most of the most of the research, development, engineering, and innovations on the planet come from America, partially because we're much more payable for businesses, and also we have freedom. And many other reasons as well, but those are just to name a few. Right, so many large companies are headquartered here. That's why there's so many Fortune 500s here. Especially in the great state. Some might argue the great country of TX is. So it'll be interesting to see what the long-term effect on this. Let me know. Do, I mean, do you think the EU will back off? I mean, they seem to just do whatever they want with pretty much no limitations. Kind of like the UN. But let me know in the comments because, as always, be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Now going over to the business blunder of the day, you have chicken meat being recalled yet again. Now this comes to us thanks to Danielle, who's a writer at Fox Business, which somehow still in business. I don't know anyone who pays for their service or like a subscription, but they do exist. Now she says, quote, meal kits with chicken recalled over listeria concerns. This time Reese's Fine Foods issued a voluntary recall for meal kits that use chicken from Bruce Pack. As we see the ripple effect go yet again. A lot of these meat companies, they have the giant companies that make it and they either white label it. So, you know, they'll put another brand on it. They'll you know, sell it as a service. Or there'll be a subcontractor or sub-supplier for other companies. In this case, it looks like it has a subcontractor. Let's see. There you see the Beast. This is branded as Bistro 58 Chicken Street Tacos. So interestingly enough, I mean, it looks like it is in the frozen food section of the store. And I'm not sure how they, how could they authentically say Chicken Street Tacos when they're not from the street, they're from the Walmart aisle. It would be much more appropriate if they called it the the Chicken Walmart aisle taco. I, 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 I'd agree with that, but... Free tacos? I don't think so. That seems like a marketing lawsuit in the works. I'm only partially kidding. Now, going to the substance of the article, they say, quote, Chicken manufacturer is doing a voluntary recall of the kits. It says Reesers Fine Foods issued a voluntary recall. They used chicken from Bruce Pack, the Oklahoma-based company that recalled millions of pounds of, of chicken last week because of the Syria outbreak. Reesers Fine Foods said that the recall is out of abundance of caution after the kits were distributed across 30 streets. However, Research Foods said it's ooh, no longer using any ingredients from Bruce Pack's effective facility. Yeah. Oops, the fallout begins from Bruce Pack. Takes a lot of time to get these massive business to business contracts and uh, hard to get them back. They'll be interested to see how this affects Bruce Pack's long term revenue and viability. Now, the company said, again, B Store 58 says, quote, Consumers who purchase these kits should not consume any parts of the kits. Rather, they may return it to the store for a full refund or discard them. The Department of Agriculture, which usually uh, originally posted the recall notice for Bruce Pack on October 9th, released a, I don't know who's reading this, they released a 343 page document of all the products affected by the recall. This includes hundreds of different items that may contain the contaminated beef. And here you can see a couple more images of it. Looks like we got also the chicken quesadilla, the chicken burrito bowl. Yeah, it's a, it's a chicken burrito bowl, but it arrives in a cardboard box. I'm not sure where the bowl comes from. And you have the chicken enchilada as well. Now, they say the recall was initiated by the Food and Safety Inspection Services, the agency of the USDA, after some products tested positive for the studio during a routine testing, which, again, I'm not sure what these companies are doing in terms of where is your internal testing, because it seems to be failing quite a bit. Now, again, the silver lining for this specific situation is, you know, no one's been, no one's been, uh, no one's passed away from it. There hasn't been any, you know, any visits to the hospital. No one's been, you know, negatively impacted too much. Seems like just, you know, a couple of dollars thrown away meat, which, again, that's replaceable. And if you want to take the time to actually go to the store, you can get that refund. In terms of the actual, you know, favorability of the product and, you know, are you going to buy it again? Yeah, I'm not sure this is a, well, pun probably the intended. It's not going to leave a good taste in your mouth. Because, again, I'm not sure. No, it's, I don't really debate how many people actually take the time to return an item, given your, just the value of a person's time to stand in a return aisle at Walmart for Lord knows how long. 
And again, it's also a frozen, yeah, it's frozen or refrigerated, so how awkward that'd be to go there, stand in line as it freezes in your hand. I can't believe you're just going to toss these in the trash, or if you're British, the dustbin, and just kind of, I mean, sours your relationship where you probably, maybe you won't buy this brand again. You only get, you know, I mean, you only get so many shots, especially when it comes to food, because obviously some of the most sensitive things you put inside of you. So, how to say, uh, Bistro28, you are certainly the business blunder of the day. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in. Again, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you can click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment. It's a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers. Heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe. Fight the good fight.